If you were able to walk into a room confident that you would be well received, seen, heard, and appreciated by others, and all it took was a few changes in how you navigate your everyday relationships, would you be willing to make those changes? It is possible to be both fully authentic and to experience the best relationships of your life. Now, here is the host of Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffin Stone. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Navigating Complicated Relationships. I am excited to have you here today. We are talking about the emotional brain today. So I'm going to leap into that in a moment. But first of all, why are you even listening to me? Because I'm a human behavior expert. And part of what I look at is the emotional brain. Did you know that that is where our greatest assets are? but also our greatest limitations. And everything depends on, well, so many factors that we're going to discuss today. But if you're in a constant state of distress, I can tell you now that we're going to have to work on that and change some things so that you can actually break out of that loop of doom and get into living your life, not just existing. So today I'm going to discuss emotional intelligence, emotional regulation techniques, and strategies for managing stress and anxiety. Because if you are full of stress and anxiety, you're not getting anything done. That's just, you know, it's not your fault. It's your problem. It's your responsibility to do what you can to change that. And, you know, if you're in a victim mentality of everything happens to you, then you're going to find that to be really difficult to change because you're not accepting that you could do something and you're just stuck in blaming somebody or something else for where you are. So looking at the emotional brain, we're going to see where you're stuck, where you can open things up. And we all have things. That's what's being human, right? I mean, if you're alive today, the chances are pretty solid that you experience stress and anxiety on an ongoing basis. There's a fallout from that. This constant state of distress takes a toll individually, in your relationships, and it also impacts your longevity. Like You're not going to live the long, healthy life that you'd like to if you are stuck in a whole lot of stress and de-stress. It just, that's not what we're here for. You're producing hormones that are cortisol, adrenaline, and it can be too much insulin as well, and we can get into that another time, but you're producing these hormones that tell your body to be ready to run from the saber-toothed tiger, to fight with the mammoth, to do whatever you need to do to survive. And none of that is helping you to create new things in your life. So let's look today with the lens of self-care before you ever need health care. And if you're already in the position of needing health care, then let's see where we can sort of reduce that need and get you into a space of being the healthiest you can be, whatever that looks like. And I mean mentally healthy, physically healthy, because it's all connected, right? So once again, I'm your host, Michaela Gaffin-Stone, and I'm a board-certified behavior analyst. I'm also a nutrition coach and a whole host of other things. I'm always studying and I'm always researching. So this is something I love to do. And I have the information, so you don't have to do that research if you don't want to. If you do want to, let me know and I'll send you some articles. I'll start sending you in all kinds of directions. So be very careful what you wish for. So today we're going to look at where your emotional pain comes from and where you can trade that pain for gain. So Stay tuned and you'll see what I mean. I will I will have some very practical things for you to do and you can discover for yourself where you can improve your lot in life, you know, where you can just enjoy things more and stress less. You know, we all want that. So let's do a definition. Emotional intelligence. It's your ability to recognize, understand and manage your own emotions as well as the ability to recognize understand and influence the emotions of others. So isn't that interesting? It's not just about you, but it's also about how you can impact other people. I mean, 
we know, right, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption here, but I think we know that if you tell someone, hey, I love the way your hair looks today, or boy, you, you're glowing, you look amazing, then that is going to light that person up. You're going to really improve their emotional outlook. They're going to be feeling better about themselves. And it's such a simple thing to do. So let me just run through that definition one more time. And if you want to make notes, feel free. If you don't, just roll with it. We'll get things explained later. So emotional intelligence. It's the ability to recognize, understand, and manage your own emotions. That's part A, if you will. You recognize, understand, and manage your own emotions. It's also the ability to recognize, understand, and influence the emotions of others. Like I just said, if you tell somebody how amazing they look today or how thrilled you are to see them, seeing them as lit up your day, they feel better about themselves. You have influenced their emotions, right? That's what I mean. It's not a manipulative thing per se, but it's something to be aware of. Because also, if you're the kind of person who is stressed out, you go to the store, the person behind the counter is a little bit slow with what they're doing, or they make a mistake, or the machine breaks down, or whatever, you know, there's lots of scenarios there. You're the kind of person that gets sort of bad tempered about it, because you're under so much stress, and you yell at the person behind the counter. Well, chances are you've just really ruined their day. And it doesn't sound like it was going well already. And now they're carrying this extra load of everything you're yelling at them, right? And it's really hard to say, well, let's just ignore that and, and let it wash off. We know it doesn't, right? Come on, if somebody yells at you, it's going to bother you for the day. So being aware and understanding that how you are with other people will affect their emotions is, I think, a very important thing to understand. In this day and age, we spend less time thinking about these things and more time reacting. I mean, the, the amount of yelling you see sort of on social media from people to people, and people don't discuss stuff anymore. They yell about it. If you don't agree with me, I'm going to yell at you until you do. It doesn't work, but people aren't stopping to use their emotional brain. They're not using emotional intelligence and saying, well, you know, maybe this is not the way to approach another human being. Yelling at them is not going to change anything. It's certainly not for the better, right? You're just going to bring their emotions down. So emotional intelligence includes several components, right? It has, it has a lot of different things in it. One of them is self-awareness recognizing your emotions and where your emotions impact your thoughts, your behaviors, and ultimately your decisions. And this one's important. When there's an event that happens, it is just an event. It's neutral until you have a thought about that event and you will make that thing mean something. So say you get fired from your job. Let's throw that one out there. Well, that's a pretty neutral event, actually. It might not be to you, but that's because you're having a thought about it. And when you think, oh no, how am I gonna pay my rent? How am I gonna do this? What am I gonna do? Where will I get another job from? Panic, panic, panic. Those thoughts will give you the emotions of anxiety and, and panic, right? And then you behave from that place. So you can't make good decisions when you've got all these anxiety hormones running around and, and you're freaking out over something. So your behaviors reflect those decisions and they're not helping you. You might go for the bottle of wine because you're just feeling so fed up that you got fired. Okay, you know, there could be a time where you need some downtime to just reflect on how you're thinking about this. But if you stay there, then you're getting into a problem where you're not recognizing that your emotions have an impact on how things are going to turn out for you. So if you want to improve your situation, recognize those emotions, allow them to be, but then let them go. 
if you stay in that circle of doom, you, you just cannot do anything good from that place. Nobody can, right? The, the, the ingredients aren't there. Self-regulation is another part of emotional intelligence, and it's managing and controlling your emotions, your impulses, and your reactions in various situations. Now that's, okay, managing your emotions. Typically, when I say that, a person responds with, you mean I just have to stuff it down? You know, or something along those lines. Absolutely not, no. That's, that's one of the worst things you can do because when you stuff your emotions down, they just wait for an opportunity and then they're right back up again. They don't go away. They just sit there stressing you out, right? So managing your emotions is a case of recognizing that maybe you're having a very big response to something that won't be helpful right now. So you can feel that response, but then take a pause before you react right? That's instead of reacting, you respond. That means you're in control of how you interact with that situation using those emotions. If you just react, you're probably yelling at somebody, you know, it's it's like that. And then you can repent at your leisure, right? You can reap the rewards of yelling at someone in an inadvised way, um, for as long as that takes, right? You know, if you're at work and you get mad at your boss and you yell at them, well, that probably won't go well. But if you're mad at your boss and you feel it and you go off for a walk or something, or you go to the restroom if you can't go for a walk and you just sit with those emotions for a minute or two and then think about your strategies. What do you want to do so that situation doesn't come up again? And then you can respond, right? So that is self-regulation. It's not a case of stuffing anything down. It's a case of working with what comes up for you. So I'm going to go into one more thing before we have a break. Wow, this time goes so fast. And that is social awareness, the ability to empathize and understand other people's emotions. You might not be feeling them. You might not agree with them. But how about you understand that they have a perspective and they have feelings and that they might not match yours? This is okay. This is what people do. When you insist somebody else sees things your way, it's actually a sign of insecurity in your beliefs. You're insisting the other person validates what you're coming up with, what you're presenting. And the need for that means you need to be in control and have them sort of subservient to your views and you need them on board with you because otherwise maybe your views aren't right. Maybe you need to look at that again. Social awareness is such an important thing. If you can't imagine what the other person is dealing with or where they're coming from, if you can't see that they have a different life experience to you, then you're really in a blinkered situation and that's going to cause a lot of stress to just circulate for you, right? So social awareness is really, really important. Now, before the break, we have gone through self-awareness and recognizing your own thoughts and emotions and the impacts that you have on other people. Self-regulation, the difference between a reaction, which is just in the moment, boom, you know, whatever comes out, and a response, which is where you've had time to consider what you want to do. And then social awareness, which is empathizing with others, understanding their emotions, and understanding that they have them and they're not yours, and their perspectives and their feelings, right? That is a lot, and yet we have so much more to cover. So I would love for you to hang around, don't go away, Make some notes if you need to, or just listen to the podcast again. That would be cool. You are listening to Michaela Gaffin Stone here on the Inspired Choices Network. And this show is Navigating Complicated Relationships. We're going off on a break. Don't go away. What if your relationships could be a source of delight instead of a source of struggle? In a world where human interactions are anything but straightforward, tuning in to Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffin Stone will offer you insights, tools, and a whole new level of understanding for you to use right now. 
Listen for Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin Stone. Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin Stone. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to Mickey at gaffinstone.com. Now back to the program. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Before the break, we covered social awareness, self-regulation, and self-awareness when it comes to emotional intelligence. And this is all to do with the emotional brain and how you can work with it to improve your life, to improve your daily interactions. For example, relationship management, building and maintaining healthy relationships is key. We're, we're social animals. That's what people are. And in order to do this, you need to communicate effectively, resolve conflicts, don't just walk away, don't just go silent or get mad until the other person apologizes, even if they didn't do anything. All of those things are very child oriented uh, coping mechanisms. I don't mean it's good for a child. I mean, you learned it as a child. And so we need to unlearn that and find ways to stand your ground and resolve a conflict. This is usually with curiosity. If you're curious about the other person's perspective, and maybe you're making some assumptions here, be curious about that. Is that something that you can ask the other person for clarity? Communicating effectively is going to help those relationships, and you need good relationships in your life. That's a no brainer, but you know, I'm throwing it out there because that is part of your emotional brain, right? So when you have better relationships, you're also going to be improving those social skills that kind of come together. And that gives you the opportunity to build more satisfying relationships, whether that's at work, with your friends, at home, with your kids. You know, it, it all interacts. It's all part of fostering a positive environment where you can thrive and the people around you thrive. Emotional intelligence is also linked to having lower levels of stress, anxiety, depression, and building resilience and coping skills. That makes sense, does it not? I mean, you, you can see how if you're Re responding rather than reacting, you're taking time to understand the other person's perspective, then you're out of your own head and into a space of curiosity about the people around you. You can't be sort of deeply stressed and anxious about things if you're curious, not if you're really, really curious, because that takes precedence. Learning something will take precedence. So being curious, if you learn one thing today, if you try one thing today, please make that be curiosity about the people around you. Take some time to self-reflect. This isn't indulgent. It's not, you know, all about me and nobody else kind of thing. It's, that's not what I mean. It's more understand where you're coming from so that you know what your triggers are. When you feel your emotions rising, be curious about that. What's that linked to? Chances are it's not the current event. It might be a pattern of behavior. Whenever this happens, these emotions trigger. If that's the case for you, then it depends on what's happening, but you might want a coach or you might want a therapist. What I would suggest 
is that you do the work to figure that out. Know where your triggers are, know what the emotions are that come up for you and the patterns of behavior that don't serve you. Because we have the conscious brain, which is what you're listening to me with right now. You're sort of making sense of what I say, hopefully, and hopefully that does make sense. And you have the subconscious brain. The subconscious brain is your autopilot. It's the thing that helps you to drive from A to B without thinking about every turn you take. It's the thing that gives you your habits. That's where your habits live. These are automatic behaviors. So when you have automatic behaviors, patterns of them that are problematic for you, they're not helping you move forward, they keep you stuck or worse, take you backwards, then this is something that you can become conscious of and make a decision to change. And that's one of the things I'd like to offer you today is a way to change your habits, the ones that you aren't enjoying for something that you are enjoying. The first part of changing a habit is to decide what are you doing that doesn't work and what do you want to replace it with? That might sound like a no-brainer, but really the thing that replaces the habit that's not working for you needs to make sense. So if your idea is, I eat too many pastries, therefore I'm going to drink more water, that's kind of sort of related, but not really. It's not going to connect and you're not going to get an automatic behavior from that. You're not going to develop a new habit. It just doesn't make enough sense. But if you're wanting to drink more water and you're already a coffee drinker, for example, no problem. You can put your bottle, your pitcher, whatever it is you have that you drink water from next to your coffee pot to remind you so that the new habit of drinking more water can piggyback off an existing habit, which is drinking coffee, right? I'm not telling you to take anything away, but over time, as you're drinking more water, you get used to that habit. You can now decide, does coffee give you palpitations? Does it keep you awake at night? Is it causing you to feel more stressed and anxious? Because it is a stimulant, right? So if that's happening for you, then you might want to start replacing the coffee with the water that you've already added in. See how that works? So you start with building a new habit on an existing one and then decide, do you want to take the existing one away? There's a lot of ways to do this and you can pepper these things throughout your day. It doesn't have to be one habit at a time. If they make sense, and if they're linked to something that's already anchored, that you already do in your subconscious. So that's a lot of information about habits. And, and I hope that wasn't too much. But essentially, habits can be replaced with more functional things. It's up to you to decide what do you want to do? What do you want to stop doing? What do you want to add to what you do? All of these things will help if you do them in a way that serves you, it will help your emotional intelligence, it will help your emotional brain to be in a better space to make decisions from. And I mentioned right at the beginning of this episode that if you're in a state of distress, upset, you've got all these hormones running around that are causing you to be ready to fight or flight, then you cannot make good decisions, right? Another part of your decision making is going to be looking for feedback and looking for feedback from people whose opinion you value, right? If you don't see them doing what you want to do, if they're not ahead of you in some way, or at least by the side of you, then I would say you need to question, is this person going to help me build some strength and some growth in areas where I, I want help? Can they do that for you? Chances are, if they're behind you in this, no, but you might be that person for them. That's a different decision, right? And that's something that you can think about. Don't just jump into it, though. Think about, do you want to be this person's model for strength and growth? Who are you finding to get their insight into what you're doing? Talking to someone who's ahead of you in that field can give you some helpful tips they can see things because they've already done the work. 
and that can really help you to move forward. So that's the strategy I'd like to offer right now is looking for feedback from people whose opinions you value. Someone who you admire where they are, what they're doing. You see this skill set in them. You see a certain quality that you would like to have. Okay, very cool. Go approach that person and start having a conversation with them. Spend some time with them. Because the people you spend your time with, you keep company with, they are going to affect how you show up. They're going to affect your emotions. And you're going to take their perspectives on board, whether or not you do it intentionally. Over time, that's just what we do. That's how human beings operate. So choose your environment, the people around you, mindfully, right? Spend more time with the people who inspire you. Less time, or ideally no time, with the people who pull you down. It's That's how we progress as human beings. That's how things improve for us. If you feel that you don't have empathy, for example, in part of this emotional intelligence piece, and, and there are people out there that did not develop empathy as children, they just weren't in that environment, then use some perspective taking exercises. Spend some time intentionally, actively listening to others. Now, what does that mean? It means you hear what they say, yes, but you're also listening for the context, the subtext. What are they saying as well? Not just the words, but how they're delivering that to you. What is the overall message? If you are listening just to reply, you know, yeah, 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 hurry up. Now, my turn, my turn, I want to say something. Then you did not hear that person. You cannot actively listen and be planning your reply at the same time. So it means slowing down communication, but it's worth working on that so that you actually get the benefit of talking to the other person and hearing them. You might find something that is a key to making things better for them, for you, for both of you. An example would be a client I was listening to the other day and she was talking about chocolate. And, you know, we're doing a food program together, a food freedom program. And she mentioned that chocolate's very important to her. So we had a conversation and I just wanted her to talk. Tell me about chocolate. Where did it come into your life? Why is it so important? And what was really interesting to me was a certain word popped out. She said the word deprivation. Ha! Now that was interesting. So I explored that with her some more. And we uncovered a whole childhood story about chocolate and how she couldn't have any. And now as an adult, chocolate is the, the sign to her that she's no longer deprived. It's the sign to her that she's doing well. And that is an emotional connection with food. And it has nothing to do with the conscious brain until you make it conscious. And then once you know oh, this is a thing, this is going on. Now you can decide how to change that if you want to change that. But if I wasn't listening, if I wasn't actively listening to what she said, that word could have just sailed off into the distance and we'd still be talking about, well, can you eat better quality chocolate? The thing is, the quality wasn't the point. The control that chocolate had over my client was the point. And now that she can see where the issue comes in, she can choose. Do you want to have that chocolate or not? It's such a difference. When chocolate chooses you, you have no control. And that's emotional eating. When you're making a conscious choice, knowing what it represents and choosing not to let it do that to you, then you've, you've made a big breakthrough. You see how the difference actually was emotional, uh, the, in the emotional eating was active listening. That was the whole start to that journey. Isn't that wild? And we are here at another break. I have lots more for you after the break. I think I'm going to have to talk to Christine about making these double sessions or something. I could keep talking. Could you keep listening? You're listening to Navigating Complicated Relationships and I will see you in just a moment. Don't go away.
What if your relationships could be a source of delight instead of a source of struggle? In a world where human interactions are anything but straightforward, tuning in to Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffin-Stone will offer you insights, tools, and a whole new level of understanding for you to use right now. Listen for Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin-Stone, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin-Stone. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Mickey at GaffinStone.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. Now, I do love to get emails, so if you would like to email me, Mickey is spelt M-I-K-K-I, because I'm not a mouse, and Gaffinstone is G-A-F-F-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. So Mickey at Gaffinstone.com. You will find me there. That's my email, and I am very responsive. So do email me if you have any questions about this, if you have any topics you'd like me to discuss, um, anything at all, really, questions, comments, just hit me up and I will reply. And hopefully you're, you're getting some benefit out of these conversations because I very much enjoy telling you the things that I learn and hoping that they land for somebody somewhere in a way that helps your day improve and maybe your week and your month and even your year. Let's go wild, right? So overall, emotional intelligence is crucial. It plays such an important role in your personal success, your professional success, because this affects how you interact with other people. It affects how you navigate challenges and how you even look at those challenges. Like, is that a boulder in front of you or is it an opportunity to learn something and do something different? That will make the world of difference to the decision you then make moving forward. And whether or not you move forward, or if you sit down and stare at the boulder complaining about your lot in life, you know, it, it will make a difference. Nobody's judging you for where you are, but can you make a decision to work on your emotional intelligence to improve your interactions with others and yourself, right? In improve your lot in life. Why not? You can do it right now. And by the way, Happiness, which is a subject that people like to link to emotional intelligence, happiness is actually a state. It's not a goal. It's not a thing that you build. It's something that you choose. And it takes practice if you're not in the habit. But happiness is, an, is a state of emotion. It's a choice that you can work on. So when you're looking at your boulder, can you see where the benefits to having that boulder are? Does it give you an opportunity to rest, review, take a different path? Hey, that was really a blessing. Now I'm going this way instead. Like instead of just getting stuck, how can you look at that differently and take yourself to a place of happiness, a state of happiness? It's a choice. So that's something I want to throw in there so that you don't spend time pursuing happiness. It's not actually something to be pursued it's something to choose isn't that important i think so so i'm going to give you some emotional regulation techniques and see which ones you're already doing which ones you want to start with and the first one i'm going to tell you to breathe <laughs> of course i am but the breathing that really helps your brain to understand that you are not in danger you are safe you can be relaxed. You don't have to have those hormones. 
that kind of breathing is a deep breathing. For example, box breathing, which is where you breathe in for a slow count of five, hold it for five, release for five, and then depending on where you are with your box breathing, you can either pause for five before you breathe again, or just pause for a few seconds before you breathe again. And the more you practice this, five, 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 ideally five times, right? Easy to remember, lots of fives. Then you're telling your brain, it's okay, there's no saber-toothed tiger, I'm good. I can be nice and relaxed here. And the intensity of those emotions that you're feeling will be reduced. They will come down because your brain says it's safe, okay? So box breathing is one of the first things I would recommend. Do it as often as you reasonably can, and you can do it anywhere. It's just a case of remembering to do it. So remember earlier I mentioned anchoring habits. What would make sense for you to anchor that to? Is it at a certain point in your day? Is it when you do a certain action? Is it when you hear a certain trigger word? You can figure that out as to what's going to work for you the best and try it and be prepared to try different things. But the more you can incorporate box breathing, the better you're going to be able to just bring those emotions back down to something you can handle. Now, meditation is another strategy and it basically involves paying attention to right now, the present moment, without judging it. You don't have to have an opinion about it. You don't need to make it a good thing or a bad thing. You don't need to make it anything. Just awareness of where you are right now. That helps you to increase self-awareness and it also works on emotional regulation. It's not what some people think where you have to stop your thoughts. Let me just disabuse you of that one right away. You cannot stop your thoughts. That doesn't work. The brain is always chugging. It's always giving you thoughts. This is a Western misinterpretation of an Eastern practice. So just being aware of where you are and what's happening. And you can do that at the same time as the box breathing. Be aware of the breathing. There you go. You've just combined two things, right? And they bring those emotions down to a more centered place. And if you're really feeling like you have a lot of big emotions, this can be some of the biggest stuff to help you with. Now, reframing. Reframing is something I've mentioned in previous podcasts, and it's, it bears mentioning many, many more times. And that is how you look at a negative thought or an irrational thought that leads to emotional distress, and you find a different way to look at it, the different perspective. For example, the boulder I mentioned earlier. What else could that boulder be? What else could it mean? How can you change the obstacle into an opportunity. And that's not like woo-woo thinking that doesn't make sense for the average person. It totally makes sense because this boulder is there. The question is, what are you going to think about it and how are you going to respond to it? Right? The, the fact that the obstacle came up is neutral. It's just, it's a thing until you make it mean something. So you have a choice to reframe your sort of go to, this is a disaster, to, hey, this is an opportunity. Let me find the opportunity here. Might not be obvious right away. Get curious. Really look for that. Now, some people like to write. They're like journaling and, you know, lots of things come out when you're journaling. And that can be a very powerful way to, you know, give yourself an outlet for processing emotions. And it can also bring you new perspectives. So much depends on how you learn and how you operate. If you're somebody who likes writing, just start brain dumping all over the paper. And, and it typically works better with pen and paper rather than a computer. But you do lots and lots of writing and you'll be surprised at the things that come up. If you're not sure which of these techniques is for you, that's fine. I would invite you to investigate, try them, try different things. Now, if you are someone who is looking to incorporate 
exercise into your day as a way of managing emotions and well there's so many benefits to exercise do I need to go into them here but what kind of exercise do you plan to incorporate if you're working on reducing your distress and getting yourself into a place of what's called you stress which is eu stress not why are you stress you stress is where you're using stress as a fuel and it's it's a good thing it, it's the fuel of life. We need stress or we don't do anything. But distress is when you've got a blockage of that fuel and you're no longer using it properly. It is creating trouble for you. So if this is your situation, then finding something that is more intentional in movement, like Tai Chi or yoga can be really good. Pilates can be amazing. And while you're doing your Pilates, not only are you slowing down and being intentional and you're definitely in the moment, but you're also building physical strength while you reduce your mental stress. How cool is that? I mean, that is a win, 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 right? So that's something that you could incorporate into your day and make sure you have your water bottle by the side so that you're increasing your water intake to match the extra movement that you're doing. This, can you see how all of this is building towards a very healthy day for you? It's not saying that the thing somebody else did to you that was awful wasn't awful. Sure, it was awful, but don't keep giving it power. It can go away now. You can take control for yourself and you have some techniques that you can use, right? I'm offering you all kinds of things here today and I would love to know what you try and what works best let me know what works for you. Now there's another technique I'd like to throw at you right now and that's social support. We are social animals as I mentioned earlier so looking for support from friends, family or your coach that can help you to sort of feel heard, seen and heard. Human beings really need to be seen and heard and some of our biggest distress comes from feeling ignored or discounted or minimized in some way, right? That is one of the worst ways that you can interact with a person is to have them feel like they're not important, that they're not seen and they're not heard. So make sure that you have people in your environment that do see you, do hear you, and can provide validation if that's what you need, perspective if that's what you need, Talk to them and tell them what you want. One of my sons has a great way of addressing this with um, his, his close friends, which is when something's bothering you, tell me, do you want to vent? Do you want validation? Do you want a solution? What do you want from me? And I will work on that. And I think that's the most brilliant thing I've heard when it comes to establishing how a relationship is going to work. Because sometimes a person's venting and you ride over the top of them with a solution. Way to make that person feel unheard, right? And, and minimized. It's not intentional, but it's what happens. So taking a pause and just, you know, ask that person what they need, but also tell people around you what you need. That can really help you to, again, Get your emotions into a space where you can look at them with more clarity and, and less distress, right? And then you can make better decisions. So those are a lot of strategies that I've been giving you there. Let's just have a quick look before we go to a, yet another break. But you have mindfulness. You have, you know, awareness of the current moment. That's what that means. Then you've got deep breathing, box breathing, five in, hold for five, out for five, pause for five, breathe again, do it five times. You've got reframing, looking at the negative thing and making it mean something else. You have that choice. You can write in your journal or you can do mindful movements such as yoga or Pilates. You can do all of these things. I would love for you to try them and let me know how that works for you and why. Well, you know, what difference do you see in your life? Let me know.
I will see you after the break. I'm Michaela Gaffinstone and I'm here with Navigating Complicated Relationships and you are listening to me. Yay, don't go away. What if your relationships could be a source of delight instead of a source of struggle? In a world where human interactions are anything but straightforward, tuning in to Navigating Complicated Relationships with behavior expert Michaela Gaffinstone will offer you insights, tools, and a whole new level of understanding for you to use right now. Listen for Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin-Stone, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Navigating Complicated Relationships with Michaela Gaffin-Stone. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Mickey at Gaffin-Stone.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back. Excuse me. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to Navigating Complicated Relationships. And I'm your host, Michaela Gaffinstone. You can email me, absolutely, mickey at gaffinstone.com, M-I-K-K-I. You can also find me on Facebook very easily. I'm there quite a lot. You can find me on LinkedIn and to some degree on Instagram. So contact me in any of those places, whatever works for you, and I will respond. Let me know how this is working for you. Let me know what other topics would be interesting for you. And if you want coaching with any of this, then let's have a conversation about that and see what it would look like for you. Because I'm not talking about things that I can't back up. I'm not talking about things that I can't help you with. That would be kind of pointless, right? So let's get into the rest of what I have for you today with what little time we have. But another thing that you might find helps you to reduce your stress is, I'm going to say time management, but I don't mean that you're going to, you know, block your calendar with everything. I don't really mean that. Time management is more, how many things do you have on your to-do list that don't really need to be there? Are they crucial? Will the world stop revolving if you take them off? Can you give them to someone else? Does it have to be today? Could it be next week, next month? You know, time management is prioritizing your tasks You could break them down into smaller steps if that works for you, or you can just shove a few things off to the side and say, I'm going to focus on this one thing. Then when it's done, I'm going to do these two other things. That could be one way of working it in. Another thing to do is if you are somebody who likes to use a calendar a lot, most of us do, then put your breaks on the calendar first. Give yourself some time to go do that Pilates or that yoga. Give yourself some time to go get another drink of water and hey, go hog wild and go to the bathroom as well. Because how many of us set our calendars with back-to-back appointments and and then you're stuck thinking, "Uh uh-oh, I didn't give myself any time at all and I'm having to jump from meeting to meeting or whatever it is that's on your calendar. That's not the ideal way to reduce your stress, right? So if you want to reduce overwhelm, anxiety, and yes, that source of stress, then be realistic about what's on your calendar and aim low. You can always add stuff later, but your brain is looking for that dopamine hit from success. So if you put less on your calendar than you would like to achieve, less than you think you can achieve, then you're going to get that dopamine. Woohoo, look at us, we did it. And you can add something if you really want to. Or you could just have a break. You could have a rest. How wild is that? I don't think we rest enough. I don't think it's valued enough. Oh, another key to working with your stress to reduce it to a manageable level is boundaries. And I have done at least two episodes on the subject of boundaries because it's so important. Learn to say no to new commitments or requests that people have of you if it doesn't work for you. You know, sometimes we say yes just because we can. We say yes because we want the other person to be happy with us. We say yes because we were taught as kids that when somebody asks you for something, you say yes, right? All of those things are unhealthy for you. 
you're you're taking on things that it might benefit the other person but you've at what expense to you now you've piled up things on your list and you're feeling this overwhelm so setting boundaries is huge take the time to practice the relaxation techniques that we mentioned earlier the things like mindfulness in the moment or visualization where do you envisage yourself in a year's time and then in nine months six months you know bring it back but make sure that your vision for a year's time is amazing it gives your brain all kinds of beautiful pictures to look at and all kinds of good feelings to go with it or you could listen to an app that gives you guided imagery there's so many possibilities here then the key thing that I'm saving right till the end, but it's it's a big deal, is the food you eat will make a massive difference to your health. If you're eating ultra processed food products and processed food products, and basically the, the more chemical it is and the less recognizable it is as something that occurs in nature, the more processed it likely is, then your body does not know what to do with this. It stresses your body to have this stuff coming into it. And so it has to store what is basically toxins somewhere in your body, usually in fat or in your liver. And this builds chronic inflammation, which makes you feel less well, less able to make good decisions, less able to deal with your day. And sometimes we don't realize how lousy we feel until we stop feeling lousy. I have a pathway for you to get to that place where you feel amazing. And it's through food and it's through nutritional psychology, figuring out where your emotional connections are to certain foods and behavior patterns. And there's a whole process. It takes 13 weeks to get you from where you are to this incredible place of knowledge and understanding. And from there, you go on for an entire lifestyle because once you've learned these things, you don't want to forget them. It's not a case of somebody telling you you can't. You don't want to because you feel so much better. And I don't typically talk about my weight or what have you, but we are right now in week 11 of a current program, week 11 of 13. And I've been doing the program with my clients. You know, that's just, I, I like to do that. Then I can sort of experience what they're experiencing. It's kind of the ultimate empathy, right? And I wasn't focused on weight. I was focused on health. I was focused on dealing with some food allergies I have. But as a wonderful result, I've lost 20 pounds. I have reduced 20 pounds. And I'm sure I'll keep going on that because I have more to go. Isn't that wild? No stress, no deprivation, no, you can't have this. This is a bad food. None of that. It's all about learning. Isn't that wild? It's not a diet. It's a whole process of learning. So if you're interested, send me an email and I'll let you know all about it. Then next week, we're speak moving topic entirely. And we're talking about epic magic, of wild places. You say what? This is with my very special guest, Katie Cross who is an author extraordinaire, and you are going to hear some incredible things from her. But I think we all need room in our lives for some epic magic and some wild places, right? That can be another place where you can de-stress is reading your books. Find something that works for you. I like fantasy. I like dragons. What works for you? Add that to your list. You have so many things that you can select from and like I said if you feel really keen try them all but don't don't sort of judge yourself on things that don't work just pay attention to oh hey that wasn't really great for me but this was good you just learned something isn't that cool write it down pay attention to how things are coming up for you and where your emotions come up Really pay attention to these things. Make notes because guess what? If you don't write it down, you're going to forget it. Do email me, mickey at gaffinstone.com and let me know how this landed for you today. Let me know what you'd like another time. See you soon.
Thank you for listening to the Navigating Complicated Relationship Show. Makayla returns Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, remember every relationship is a journey. And with the right tools, you can create stronger, more fulfilling connections.